Fora TV. The world is thinking. One of the major figures in the book is Lieutenant Colonel Nancy Jacks. Um, she's a spacesuit Ebola researcher who goes into this very lab, AA5, where she works with Ebola. And I tell a story, which I had heard from her at this point. Um, I had asked her a question one day when I was interviewing her early on. I said, you know, um, have you ever had a close call with Ebola virus? And her answer was kind of a shrug and, oh, sure, of course. You know, um, uh, those of us who work with these kinds of hazardous hot agents, um, we all have our stories to tell about close calls. And I said, well, tell me what happened. And she proceeded to describe to me how she had been working with a monkey that had died of Ebola virus, and they were cutting the monkey open and taking samples. And she had blood all the way up to the elbows of her spacesuit, blood that was radiantly hot with Ebola virus. And it was known to the Army researchers that a single infective particle of Ebola virus, if it makes contact with the human bloodstream, is enough to start an explosive fatal infection in a human being. And Ebola has a case fatality rate of about 95 percent. That is to say, if you become infected with the hottest strains of Ebola, your chance of surviving the infection are maybe 5 percent. This stuff is incredibly lethal. So Nancy Jacks was working in the hot zone, and she was constantly doing safety checks, observing her suit. What you do is you constantly check your spacesuit for any sign of a breach, a breach in the wall that, that protects you from the hostile biological world that surrounds you in level four. And she suddenly discovered that the, a hole had opened up spontaneously in her spacesuit, right in the bloody area. And then as she moved her hand around, she could feel blood, Ebola saturated blood, mushing around inside her spacesuit. Now, she had a cut on her hand. The night before, she had been cooking for her kids. The colonel cooked for her kids. And she was opening up a can of beans, and she got a cut on the palm of her hand, which she had covered with a Band-Aid. Um, so she immediately began to wonder if any of this monkey blood had gotten anywhere near the cut, the open wound. Um, so she made an emergency exit from level four. And you have to stand for seven minutes in the chemical shower. There are these big double steel doors. And you go into the, the, the gray area, the shower. And then you, 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 know, you have to stay there for seven minutes while the chemicals wash all over the outside of your spacesuit. So she was standing there with blood inside her suit, knowing full well that while the outside of her spacesuit was sterilized, the problem was that the life form was inside the spacesuit with her. And the question was whether it was also in her bloodstream as well. So I'm interviewing Nancy Jacks, and I said to her, um, did you think you were going to die of Ebola? Were you imagining the effects that I've just described to you? And she said, no, actually not. And then she gave this answer that just cut me to the heart. She said, uh, no, no, no. I was actually thinking about the fact that the kids were home with a babysitter, and I'd forgotten to go to the bank that day. And I was wondering, oh gosh, I forgot to go to the bank. Who's going to pay the babysitter if I'm breaking in the isolation hospital with Ebola virus. And who's going to cook dinner for them tonight? Jerry, her husband. Jerry's in Texas. Um, and Jerry can't cook anyway. Um, you know, what's going to happen if I'm breaking with Ebola in the Slammer hospital, the isolation hospital? Um, and I don't think that any novelist could quite make that up. I think it's the power of nonfiction writing. Um, that answer had the ring of truth. It had an absolute power of plausibility. And it was a very a beautiful and powerful statement about mothers, children, love, and death all at once. And I was really quite moved by it.